Hannah Scott. I am originally from Wichita, Kansas. I was born and raised here. I think I've always been an artist. I mean, I was drawing since I was really little and I grew up drawing. I always knew that I really liked to just draw faces. When I was a teenager, I got a lot of those teen magazines and I would just like draw the faces of the girls. Like I would try to recreate it as closely as possible. That's kind of what I strived for. I thought that that meant that you were a good artist when you're younger. If you can draw something exactly as it looks, that's in my young mind, that's what I thought made a good artist. And you know, later you realize that that's not really what it's about. But you know, when you're making stuff when you're young, you don't have any really point of reference. And then of course you look back a couple of years ahead and you're like, that stuff was terrible. <laughs> you know, like you just don't really, your frame of reference is so off point. I didn't originally go to school for drawing. I was interested in becoming a journalist or I was, you know, I did a lot of creative writing. After high school, I went to KU. After I moved back home, after a year and a half, I started going to Wichita State. I took like an extracurricular painting class from a woman named Emily Brookover. She kind of convinced me to <laughs> change my major to uh, studio art and do that full time. I just didn't think that you could really turn that into a career or do it at all. She was really like the main inspiration to, you know, become an artist. My style kind of varies between the projects that I do. Uh, I do drawings that are pencil on paper, graphite drawings that are more photorealistic, renderings, you know, of like natural or figurative subject matter. And I also have a more illustrative style that I use for like commercial work or just for fun where it's looser, it's like pen and ink drawings. It's less rigid or structured as the graphite drawings that I do. The style just kind of varies between projects and what I kind of what I feel like doing. My family has always been pretty supportive and my mom kind of always told me as I got older to do what I was really passionate about because she didn't want me to feel stuck in the same way that she felt. My dad is really creative. He paints and I've grown up watching him make really awesome things. He took a trip to Germany a couple years ago and he like took pictures of all the graffiti that he would see on like the train cars. And so then he went home and he like painted a bunch of it on his fence and like on the garage. He's just, I think he's just more interested in like the recreation and the making of it. But he's really the only one that I would say is like creative in that way. My creative process begins with an, an idea. I kind of solidify a more concrete idea and then I move forward with like drafts and revisions and editing that and then you know I'll finalize the drawing on paper. Because I'm spending so much time on the drawings that I make it gives me a lot of time to be hypercritical of what I'm doing. I'm like spending so much time with this one drawing so I'm picking out um, what I see are issues with it, you know? And so if I don't fix it, I know I'll end up disliking it in the final drawing. So I just like have to spend that time to refine it as closely as possible. I think that's that's been a problem, but it's just the way that I operate. So I kind of don't feel like I have a choice sometimes. It applies mostly to commissioned work because I'm answering to somebody else. And so I, I'm seeing this discrepancy in the artwork then they're gonna see it too. But in my personal work too, I think I'm less, I'm less um, critical of like the technical part aspect of it. I'm more critical of it's good enough in a conceptual way. I've done more digital work, but I don't, I don't prefer it to pencil on paper or pen and ink on paper because that will always feel the most comfortable and the most real and the most satisfying. Digital, it's, it's a great tool to experiment with and to feel more free because, you know, if you make a mark, you can erase it and do it again. But pen and ink on paper, you know, pencil on paper is different because you can erase it, obviously, but it, it feels more permanent in that way. And every mark that you make feels more like calculated and purposeful, I guess. Yeah. 
I like to work in my home studio the best. I'm most comfortable there. I always listen to music and I always like to kind of be alone so that I can just like get into the headspace of just creating and focusing only on that. And it allows me to, you know, kind of have that freedom of not being confined to any kind of time constraints or anything like that. So this is Vortex Souvenir. This is a shop that I co-own with my friend Kevin Wiltz. Working here, it is helpful for my own personal work because I see what is being made by people that are, you know, similar in age to me. It pushes me to do more and to make a larger mark in my own work. We just hope to kind of inspire people and let them see just like really quality work that's being made. If art historians look back on my work, if I'm lucky enough to live a long life, that they can look at the work that I'm making now and they can look at the work that I will make throughout my entire life and that they can see a change. That is success to me, that I'm, that I'm learning about myself, I'm learning about the world that I'm living in, the people around me. I would hope that that is what they would see. I find myself making work more to remind myself of why I like making work. I sometimes get really burnt out and I get um, exhausted with art making. And so there are a lot of the times I just have to just kind of like start from scratch and make baby steps back into it. I mean, like art is my purpose in life. Like I don't have any other reason to do anything. And so I have to kind of re-fall in love with it every now and then to make it feel worthwhile. My name is Hannah Scott and this is Artists in Their Space.